Um, here we are. We're back for lesson four. Today, we're going to be talking about cubism. Before we start about cubism, let's see if I can get this. Remember when we talked about the still life? We were talking about the golden age of the still life. See, you know. <laughs> yes. Um, I just wanted to show y'all this again so that you'll understand what was so revolutionary about cubism. When you think about the still life and look at it, you can obviously see there's a foreground. You can tell what's in front, a middle ground. You can tell what's in the middle, and you can tell what's in the background. It's very clear, and it's very evenly divided, and we call that the picture plane, where there's a front, a medium, and a back. So if you look, you can see the grapes right here, and you can tell that this is behind the grapes and then you can tell what the goblet is further back as it goes, okay? So this was seen as the traditional way of making art. Well, around 1907, Pablo Picasso and Brock came up with cubism and this is an example of a cubist still life. And the main thing you can see is that the picture plane, the foreground, middle ground, and background, have been jumbled all together. And that's what was one of the things that was so revolutionary about cubism. Okay, so we'll talk about this more in just a second. All right, so Picasso, here he is. Here's one of the greats of modern art, Picasso, Pablo Picasso. As I said, he invented cubism along with his friend Brock, and poor Brock, he kind of got left out. Yeah, nobody, nobody thinks about him anymore. Mm -hmm. um, because Picasso was so awesome. Well, Picasso lived a long time and he did a lot of different types of art, whereas Brock mainly did, yeah, I think, cubism, cubism, and that was about the thing. And when they first started doing cubism, it was really hard to tell their works of art apart. This is an example of early cubism, which is called analytical cubism, where um, the colors were very muted. And if you just look at that, you can see how the picture plane is all jumbled up and it almost looks like it's been broken into pieces and fragmented. Here is another, a later example. And as you're looking at this, you should be able to tell maybe what it is. That it's not a still life, it's a person. You can see the eyes, you can see the mustache. As you start looking, you can make out an eye um, you can make out other things in the image, um, but again, it's it's all jumbled up, and you're actually seeing this person from different viewpoints. That was another thing about cubism. Um, whereas, when you're drawing something normally realistically, you're looking at it from one angle. Cubism, you would almost shift and look at it from the side, and then shift and look at it from the other side, and include all those different viewpoints in one work of art. Okay, and let's see what else we have. Here we go. Here's another famous one. Um, and you can tell it's three musicians, and that's what it's called. And it was by Picasso during the um, Cubism period. And Donna, show the ones that you have over there. Donna's got two examples of Cubism. And we wanted you to see these because um, it shows collage. And that's one way that um, Picasso was so influential he not only invented cubism, he was the first known artist to use um, collage, to use a piece of newspaper, I think was the first thing, newspaper or book page in his art. All right, so let's talk about how we could create um, a work of cubism. And I want y'all to think about the still lifes that you drew, if you drew a still life. If you didn't draw a still life, maybe you drew just, I think you had yours draw an object, right? Yeah, just an and object. just think about how Every you looked object. at it, uh -huh, you looked at it and you drew it, okay? Um, here, this is just a line drawing of a still life, just to show you. So it would be something like this, okay? To make it look like cubism, a simple way to do it would be to break it into different parts. So I'm going to show you some ways to break this down into different parts. And by doing that, what you're doing is you're taking a realistic work of art and you're making it into more of an abstract work of art. All right, to wrap up cubism, I forgot to show you. Look at this adorable picture of Picasso. It's one of my favorites where he's got the breadsticks down to look like his hands. Um, it just shows the playful nature of Picasso. He was always, lines. yeah, he was always... Um, being playful with his artwork. 
And that's how he was able to invent things like collage and cubism. Now this is a drawing by Picasso just to show you that he was very capable of realism and he did create some realistic works of art. A lot of times people associate things like this with Picasso, um, a more abstract work of art, and you know, a lot of people ridicule it and they don't really understand it. So I'm hoping that after our discussion today of cubism, it's gonna help you see how he got there with his abstraction. Because again, you see it all broken down, but you're also seeing the multiple viewpoints um, that we talked about. Look at the feet. I'm not getting the feet in there. The feet are great. So, <laughs> summary. This is a flower pot, right? This is just like a regular drawing of a flower pot. And this would be an example of a cubism flower pot. Okay, so what this is, is I just literally copied a still life that I had done earlier. I just put a piece of paper on top of the still life and traced it. And what I was thinking is if you have your still life that you created or if you have your object that you drew and you wanted to do this to it, you could just take another piece of paper and trace over it. Or you can draw another still life or another object. That's fine. But once you get it down like this, um, we're not going to worry so much about the different viewpoints. We're just going to try to make it look fragmented like the, um, the cubist would have. And we're going to try to break it up so there's not an obvious foreground, middle ground, and background. Okay? And to do that, you, you're just going to take a straight edge and you're just going to make some lines. And you can divide it up any way that you want. It's almost, I mean, you could do it like puzzle pieces. These are turning into like triangular pieces. So you could keep working this way and I would kind of make it into smaller pieces by and, going in different directions, right? And I want to say, I want to interject right now by interject. saying for my classes, oh. all right, I want us to focus on one image, except for possibly the nature illustration class. Um, all my other classes, I want us to focus on one image, um, not multiple like this. Unless okay. you just feel so inspired, you can. Okay. Okay, so this, you get the idea with this. Um, and I want to get little areas like this. Okay, and I would go through and I would do the whole thing. And then I would take whatever media you want to use. It could be colored pencils. It could be watercolors. It could be the the markers like Donna showed y'all how to use with water, and you would color each one of these areas. Um, I'm gonna show you one more way to do it, and then I'm gonna show you when it's done, okay? Um, so if you don't wanna do like the diagonal lines, you could also do straight lines and divide it up, and you could do them into like rectangles and squares, okay? Which is the way the one I'm about to show you is now. So it would just be going like this. And again, um, I like to have lots of small, smaller areas. Okay, so you just keep going with the whole thing. And here, here's the finished one. And that's what I did on this one. It was just a still life that I drew. And then I might, I think I used a ruler. I think I just used a ruler, break it up. But see, then every little shape I tried to find and I used a different color for it. And, you know, you can be creative. There's really not any rules with this. It's just when you start adding all these different colors and it becomes more abstract. It's recognizable, but it's abstracted. And you can abstract it as little or as much as you want to do in this. You want to show them the one that you have that's like guitar? Yes. Yeah. So, like, here is an example of um, doing that technique with just one object. Um, so, for my... You know, my first and second, and uh, second and third, um, I want you to use an everyday item, an everyday object. Um, for my nature notebooking and nature drawing, y'all are also going to focus on one um, nature-themed object. But for my nature illustrations class, I want you guys to think about um, doing a nature-themed still life with multiple objects, like how... Miss Donna just showed you. And if you're one of mine, if you're my fourth through high school, I want to, I'd love to see a still life.
Okay, and again, it does not have to be the same subject matter. We talked about what still lifes are. That's pretty wide open. Do you have any suggestions like choosing their color? Like I, I notice the colors. Yeah, I notice yours is all your backgrounds cool colors. Um, I would definitely use a limited range of colors. Yeah, I think whenever. I always in my art I tend to limit my colors anyway. Um, I just like that look. But I think if you do limit your colors, it makes you think more about the repetition of color and reusing those colors in areas and getting the harmony and balance that we like to talk about in art. Okay. All right. To wrap up cubism, I forgot to show you. Look at this adorable picture of Picasso. It's one of my favorites where he's got the bread sticks down to look like his hands. Um, it just shows the playful nature of Picasso, he was always, lights. yeah, he was always um, being playful with his artwork. And that's how he was able to invent things like collage and cubism. Now this is a drawing by Picasso just to show you that he was very capable of realism and he did create some realistic works of art. A lot of times people associate things like this with Picasso. Um, a more abstract work of art and you know a lot of people ridicule it and they don't really understand it so I'm hoping that after our discussion today of cubism it's going to help you see how he got there with his abstraction because again you see it all broken down but you're also seeing the multiple viewpoints um, that we talked about look at the feet I'm not getting the feet in there the feet are great so <laughs> summary this is a flower pot Right? This is just like a regular drawing of a flower pot. And this would be an example of a cubism flower pot. Okay? All right, so that's cubism. Got anything else you want to say about cubism or Picasso? I love Picasso. I have He's to say that. He's a one, he was a wonderful artist. I look like this when I woke up this morning. How about that? <laughs> Um, so now I'm just going to redir redirect my guys. Okay, you do that. Okay, so I want y'all to, um, what I want you guys to do, and I'm going to send an email out to your parents for sure, but the, all, everyone in my class, in my first and second grade art, and in my second and third grade art, I want y'all to focus on drawing a still life of one object, an everyday object, coffee cup, why well, can't stuffed animal, stuffed animal, stuffed animal, um, and then I want you to break it down just like Donna showed you. Y'all practice using your rulers, um, so remember what I've told y'all about holding that ruler down and making sure it doesn't move, but you can also get your mom to help you or your brother and sister to help you somebody to help you hold it so y'all can get those nice straight lines and i want y'all to focus on um well that's what i want you to do just one object okay um for the nature notebooking class and the nature drawing class same rules apply except for i want you to focus on an insect or an, a cat and a dog, but something an very... An insect would be fun. An insect would be a lot of fun. Like a ladybug. A ladybug would be... a beetle. A beetle. Beetles would be awesome. Ladybugs. Um, I want y'all to kind of focus on uh, those things. My nature illustrations class, just to tell you again, I want you to focus on at least... I want you to focus on a still life. Three, like maybe you want to do a flower and a leaf, and a, I don't know, a rock. What could they do in a nature, a stick, something. I want you to do at least three objects, and I want you to break it up like like, Miss Don, like the one in Miss Donna's. And mine, the subject matter is open as long as it's a still life, and it's all broken into shapes, okay? I can't wait to see these. I can't either. All right. All right. Bye. Bye.